So we're going to talk about productivity and this core belief that we all seem to be carrying here about I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. And this is a question from Lara. And um, I'm going to answer Lara's question with some pointers about what to do with this kind of belief. And, you know, a real, it's, 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 it's a felt sense that I'm not doing enough. I need help. I need help doing more, right? So we're going to talk about, well, some of the thinking patterns around this and also ways to simplify things. So Lara's question is, um, uh, David, I want to thank you for creating your in-depth course. It was insightful and helpful. And this is the course on procrastination on my website. And I've been struggling with this issue for as long as I can remember. I felt relief and support from you with every video I watched from the course. And your understanding of the issue really spoke to me. And your generosity and compassion was palpable. You have been a godsend, truly. So thank you, Lara, for that. If I may, and you may, I would like to request some support with making a schedule for working from home for adult professionals. So I've been following your scheduling system, enjoying my breaks and working in 30 minute slots. So if you don't know, the, the approach I take is a big elaborate plans for the day are actually unhelpful because quite often we make these good intentioned plans, well-intentioned plans, and then fail to follow through on them and then feel guilty. So my approach is all about ending a cycle of feeling the emotion of guilt. Once we can remove guilt by not making elaborate plans, but taking it step by step, making small commitments and having really clear boundaries with your work, the guilt goes away and the productivity just naturally improves by itself. So that's been working for Lara. And what I have found is I am not able to keep up with the workload because I, f I only end up doing a few hours of work per day. I enjoy what I do, but I would like to also be able to get more done. Please let me know if you can help me out or perhaps this will be a good topic for a video. Thanks for the work that you do. So Lara, thank you for that. And I want to just point something out, okay? What you're doing here, first of all, is fantastic. You should be giving yourself a lot of credit for the fact that you're actually consistently engaging with the work, but we'll talk about that. But one point I wanted to make is that so many of us have this idea that I'm not doing enough, right? Now, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics actually did some research on this, and they observed people in their daily work and what was the average amount of hours that people were actually working? You know, not talking with colleagues or not taking, you know, um, sh online shopping or something like that, right? You remove all that stuff. And they found out that on average, people are doing about two hours, 53 minutes of actual work per day. So let's just gain a little bit of perspective here about the significance of this problem, okay? The fact that you're doing a couple of hours of work a day, okay, maybe you want to improve on that, you're open to improving on that, that's absolutely fine. But you have to give yourself credit. This, we don't want to start framing this as, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly unproductive and I need to do something urgently about this. Let's start off with some validation for where you are. And that goes to everybody watching this video. We have to validate and, and come to accept and encourage ourselves from where we are right now, today. Self-improvement is all about someday in the future I'll be good enough and I'll be okay and then I'll deserve some validation and self-compassion. It's essential that we start to give ourselves some validation right now where we are. So because that's going to be more helpful moving forward here. So I just wanted to point that out, right? We, we, we go into these social comparisons of other people must be doing a lot more work. And in truth, I mean, there's a statistics on it. It's about like two hours, 53 minutes a day. So we got to see where we are right now as a win. And with procrastination, if you're struggling with productivity and, and um, you know, we're not doing enough, all we really want to establish here, and maybe you're not, you're not doing as much as Lara is, right? All we're trying to do with procrastination fundamentally is raise our baseline of consistent daily effort from well, what is our typical baseline if we have procrastination as an issue? It's nothing. Days will go by when I don't do anything. I certainly had that issue. So all success here to start off is raise my baseline from I can't do anything today. I procrastinated all day. I didn't do anything to I did something today. 
the difference between something and nothing is everything, right? So yes, we can look at increasing how much we actually do, but it is a success already if you have consistently raised your baseline to some small step forward towards this goal, as opposed to being paralyzed by procrastination and not being able to take any action at all. What I always say is, yes, we see, we see, we see where we are right now as a win. And once we start to develop this consistency, the philosophy becomes, can I comp combine consistency with rare moments of greatness or rare moments of days when I can and feel inspired to do a lot more work. So why I like that is it's, it's about emotional realism. There's not, it's not going to be the case that every single day I'm going to be hyper productive. Some days I'm not going to feel so good. And all I'm looking for is, can I raise my baseline from zero to anything? That's the consistency piece. And then there will be days when you feel more energized, more motivated. And those days you can enjoy and see how far you can go with your productivity. So combining consistency with rare moments of greatness. Because it's emotionally realistic to do that. Now what I would say, a few pointers here is, okay, if you, if you really want to start to look at, now can I really start to push on with my productivity? The first session of the day, the first productivity session of your day is by far and away the most important one, okay? So that's because if you, if you can do something productive early in your day, it will make it much more likely. There's a, this psychological momentum that starts to build. And because of the, the positive emotion that you will feel from that first session, it start, starts to make subsequent uh, productivity sessions seem a, a lot more enticing, okay? So what I would suggest is, what we're trying to do with pr productivity is get out of indecisiveness. So when you wake up in the morning, you do your morning routine, whatever that might be. You might even do some journaling or self-reflection or something like that. But then pick your start time for your work first thing. Do it early, okay? Now, if you know anything about my system of, of boundaries with work, I'm not saying be productive first thing. I'm just saying end the decisiveness and pick a time for when you intend to start early in your day. If you don't follow through on that, there's an, many videos I've made about what happens when that happens, in, uh, when, when that occurs, which is really about enforcing a boundary with it and stepping away from work. But I'm not gonna get into that too much here. The point I'm making is pick your start time very early. That should be your first priority every day because all we're trying to do is get out of the indecisiveness, okay? Procrastination is really in, indecision. I should start, don't wanna start, when should I start? Maybe I'll start soon. And then this, this pattern of maybe I should start soon goes on all day. So what we wanna do is make a decision. Now it should be a loving decision. It should be a compassionate, encouraging decision about, well, maybe I need some rest first, but at this point in my day, I'm going to start. So that's the first thing we can do. Make that decision as early as you possibly can. That will help. And also if you can hit that first one, it will make all subsequent productivity sessions very, very, uh, very easy, much easier. The other thing to talk about here is, yes, we're, we're focused on productivity here, and there is a part of us that needs productivity and needs to take responsibility. And that's a very valid emotional need. But I would also suggest look at your other emotional needs outside of productivity. There's a book I have on my website. It's called Forget Happiness. It's all about what are your emotional needs. And the idea is if you can find out about these other emotional needs that you have outside of productivity and start to meet those emotional needs, what you're going to find is you're developing emotional compliance with yourself. There's no longer this emotional stuff that is resistant to taking steps forward with productivity because it feels that they feel that their, their needs have been met. There's five basic emotional needs in the model that I use, and you can find, it, find that in the book. But meet your own emotional needs. Master meeting these other emotional needs. You can do that very quickly. It's not actually that hard to meet your own emotional needs. Um, it's not actually that time and energy intensive at all, but that will certainly lead to a lot more compliance in your in your desire to be produ productive. So the other thing is boundaries. Okay. Now again, we're just looking for a baseline and consistency with your effort here. So you might say to yourself, okay, if we're talking about boundaries with your work. Try and have a minimum amount for yourself every day. For okay, zero is not great. 
I want to avoid days when I'm not doing anything towards my productivity goal. What's the minimum I'm looking for here? And again, as I said, if you can reach that minimum, it could be 30 minutes. Give yourself a pat on the back. The other thing is, what is your maximum for the day? So you're talking here, Lara, in this question about, well, I'm doing a couple of hours a day and it's, I'd like to do more. Now, I'm not hearing what is an upper limit for the amount of work that you're going to put in this project every day. And that's an issue because all we're trying to do with productivity, we're not trying to become super disciplined or anything like that. The only issue with productivity is that your nervous system needs to be compliant. Now, your nervous system, when it hears, all I have to commit to today is 30 minutes, it will say, okay, I can do that, so it seems achievable. This is why we have minimums. Minimum today is 30 minutes. If I can do that, pat on the back. And now I'm into kind of bonus territory. Anything I can add to that is, is helpful. But we also add, but there is an upper limit to the amount of time I'm going to put into this. Now, whatever that number is going to be for you, Lara, is a personal choice. But just by having an upper limit of today, the maximum I'm going to do is four hours. It could be five or whatever the number is for you personally. When your nervous system hears you make that, that commitment to limiting your exposure to this project, it starts to become much more compliant because it realizes, okay, she's not going to expend all our energy, which I need to keep her safe. The nervous system is all about safety. It doesn't care about personal gold. If there's an upper limit, the nervous system will hear that and say, okay, I can, I can do that. That seems okay. Now, I'm not saying you have to reach the upper limit. I, what I'm saying is if you get to the, the upper limit that you said, you must stop working for the day. Once you make that commitment to your nervous system, to your body, you have to step away from it. So be super strict with that. Again, I've said this in many videos before. The, the person who can't stop work is, this is in the, the workaholism kind of category we're talking about here. The person that can't start work is the procrastinator. Both of them have a problem with boundaries, right? When should I start? When should I finish? It's the same problem. So boundaries in this whole issue is essentially important to look at. Now, one final thing about the psychology behind this. This is not a trivial point I'm going to make here. We have this this inner dialogue, it comes from childhood, it comes from self-help, to be honest, and self-improvement. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. And we look around and we make comparisons and everything else. If you take it day by day and stop worrying about the intentions for tomorrow, next week, I, I need to become much more productive, I want you to start changing your story about today. Just focus on today. Today, I did enough work for today. Now, I'm not talking about tomorrow or next week. Your story, really, that inner dialogue, the self-talk should become, I always do enough work each day. Every day I do the perfect amount of work. This is the kind of dialogue that we want to be talking about here. And remember, it's not saying just because I did this much today means I'm going to do the same amount tomorrow. You can be open to doing more tomorrow and next week. But today, I did enough work. I always do enough work every single day. This is the story we want to be telling ourselves because it's that encouragement piece that's missing for most of us. So take it day by day and give yourself some, some positive feedback on, that's okay, I did something today. That's, that's good enough for today. So Lara, I hope that's helpful. The big thing I guess from today's video is this social comparison of other people are doing more than me. Statistically speaking, that's probably not as true as you think it is. So just keep that in mind. And for anyone watching this, the takeaway I want you to take from this video is just focus on increasing your baseline from nothing to anything. Anything you can do, any small step towards your goal. Here's the really great thing. You don't even